So iOS 18 has been out for a little bit of time now. And whether you're on a beta version or seven months from now, you're on the official version and you ever want to go back down to iOS 17, this is a process that you can basically follow and it's pretty easy. You can go ahead and basically downgrade back to iOS 17, but it will, you know, you can basically, you won't necessarily lose any data, but as long as you have backups in place, you will retain basically almost all the data that you can basically have. And that starts with making sure that you've done the proper backups on your particular iPhone. So right here, I have an iPhone 13 on iOS 18, and I wanna go and go back down to iOS 17 on basically all my iPhones. But how do I do that? Number one, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you create as many backups as possible. So number one, what we wanna do is you wanna make hard backups of basically as many things as we can. So if you have the ability keeping note of any applications that you may need that you know may have some issues so if you're going from ios 18 to, to ios 17 keep in mind that you can't just like transfer back like if you do like a pc backup you won't necessarily be able to you know restore all of your stuff that way however if you've made cloud backups icloud backups google photo backups any other application backups of your applications you'll probably be you know in a good spot where you won't have to you know actually you know lose any of that data but you can always do is you make your way over into your settings application that you have right here. You could then go through and click on your name that's in the top right up here. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go and click on iCloud, which is right here. And you'll basically be able to see all the information that you have that's backed up already. So you wanna make sure you keep a close eye on this and you wanna make sure all the information and data on your iPhone is backed up. If you want messages backed up, notes, mail, drive, you wanna make sure everything is backed up. As you can see, you know I don't have that much stuff backed up, but you wanna make sure it starts here. On top of that, just as a precaution, what I'd recommend doing is scrolling down and going into general, which is right here. Going into, all the way at the bottom, there's a transfer or reset option. Clicking here, and right here where it says prepare for new iPhone, I would recommend just clicking get started and just making a full backup of all your data on your iPhone. So just in case something happens, you'll at least have this backup that you can also kind of go back to as well. So make another backup of this. This is completely free. I think it houses your data for at least like a couple of weeks or a month or two. So it says 22 days, so 21 days, so three weeks. And this will make it so even in a worst case scenario, your iPhone data doesn't get restored. At least you'll have this backup that you can also restore from as well. So just go and click continue and then continue on with that one. On top of that, all the applications that you basically will need passwords for, you want to make sure you jot those down as well. So your Facebook account, your Netflix account, any information. If you have your password set up on your iPhone, you can tap on your settings up here. Actually, all your passwords are now inside of the passwords application. So you can find your passwords app. Remember, if you're going to downgrade, there are some things that won't be transferred down. So keep that in mind, like the passwords application. So if you're already using this, you may want to just back up all the passwords that you have and just make sure you have everything jotted down because you don't want to be in a situation where you no longer have passwords that you should have saved. So come in here, save all your passwords as well, and that's a great place to start. So now that everything is backed up, you're almost ready to go. You will need a computer in order to do this as well. So keep that in mind. If I didn't say that in the beginning, you will need a PC, you need a wire. This is a computer method. So now we're pretty much ready to get started. So now what you want to do is you want to completely shut down your iPhone. You can do this by holding down the volume up button and the power button on the side. So you can go and completely shut down your iPhone. Or what you can do is you can swipe down from the top on iOS 18, hold down the top button right here, and you can go and slide the power off your iPhone. You can do either option. Now you want to grab that, you know, lightning, USB type C, whatever wire that you can connect to your particular iPhone. And what we're going to want to do, and sorry, the lighting is so terrible. What we're going to want to do is while we go ahead and plug in our iPhone at the lightning cable at the bottom, we wanna also hold down the side button that we have right here. So make sure your iPhone is fully turned off. All we're going to wanna to do is plug in our particular iPhone just like this while we're holding down the side button. And when you do that, what's going to happen is it's going to put our iPhone into restore mode. So after you get into the Apple logo right here, a little computer icon with a thing is going to you know kind of show up right after it. I think we've seen this like a thousand times before. And when you get into this particular page, this is exactly what you wanna see. Your iPhone, you will connect to your Mac and your Mac will actually start showing up some things, whether you have a Mac or PC, as long as you have the Files app or iTunes installed, you should be able to see some pop-ups coming up inside of your particular Mac. So now you will see this pop-up come up inside of your Mac. So what you're going to see is this little thing, whether you have a Mac or PC or whatever you have. Now it's gonna say your Mac check for the software or whatever. You wanna go and click on check. 
as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi and all that stuff, you should be good to go. So now it says there's a problem with your iPhone that requires it to be updated or restored. What you want to do is you can either click on restore if you have a backup already on iOS 17. If you don't have one, you can also just click on update. Now it says it's automatically going to check for software update is disabled. Would you like to check for a new iPhone software update? You can go and click on check. And what's going to happen is it's going to check for the latest update that's available on the iOS 17 version or the most recent iOS 17 version. So when you get this little pop-up, all you're going to want to do is you want to go and click on install. So now what's going to happen is it's going to start installing, it's going to start downloading iOS, you know, the previous iOS version. So in this case, iOS 17. It's going to take a little bit of time. It could take, a, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, depending on your Wi-Fi connection. So all you're going to want to do here is just let it download. Big things to keep in mind, keep your iPhone completely plugged in while you're doing this. So do not go through and just randomly unplug your iPhone. I would also recommend keeping your Mac, your iMac, your Windows PC, if it's a laptop, keeping it fully plugged in and keeping it charged. The last thing you want to do is to have your Mac restart or have your iPhone restart or whatever if it's not working out right. So, you know, don't unplug your iPhone, keep it fully plugged in. And once it's downloaded, we'll go and take, you know, take a step back and, you know, look at it again, but let it download and we'll go from there. Also, you might see some pop-ups that look something like this. All you want to do is go and just make sure you keep clicking on next. And you want to go and click on agree when these particular things come up. And when you see this particular panel come up, you're almost good to go. Now, your iPhone will go ahead and look like this for a little bit of time. So all you're going to have to do here is just wait it out. It usually will just be on this little page for like 10 minutes or so. So if you get into this little pop-up, literally all you're going to have to do is just wait a few moments. You know, do not unplug your iPhone. Like I said, do not unplug it from the Mac or PC, wherever you have it, Windows, whatever. Just keep it like this for like at least for the duration of time. Once it restarts, we'll check back in. But again, just make sure you do not go ahead and unplug your iPhone. Because if you do, it may end up, you know, you, you may lose a lot of information. It probably won't break. You just have to follow these instructions again. But just don't go down the direction of just, you know, unplugging it. So now when you actually go ahead and get your iPhone to boot up after it's fully installed, you might get this little pop-up. I wouldn't really worry about it. iPhone locked the owner. That just basically means you didn't turn off your Find My, so it's totally okay. You can go ahead and basically just unlock your particular iPhone now, and you can just go through the normal process of basically setting up your iPhone. So now what you can do is you can just go through the normal process as you normally would. So you can go find the country that you're from or whatever the case is. You can change your appearance. You can kind of do whatever you want to now. And you know, if you want to, you can actually set up with another iPhone. It might make your life a little bit easier. But in this case, I might actually just, I'll just set up without a different device. I'll go and log into Wi-Fi. And then it usually just takes a few minutes for your iPhone to go and set up. And all we're doing is basically just going through the normal process of setting up our iPhone as we normally would. So it really isn't anything super different. Now, this is going to be our little activation lock. So now all we have to do is type in the same exact information for our email and our password. So you can go through and make sure you type it in correctly. Because if you don't, it's not going to allow you to go through properly but you will have to send in with your Apple ID at some point in order to get all your information back. So now you can go and click on continue. You can set up your iPhone, you can set up for yourself or for your child. You can set up with face ID so you can continue on or just you know set it up later. You can create a passcode. You can just don't not use a passcode if you don't want to, so you can just skip onward from that. Now this is very important because this is how you're going to retrieve all your data. So if you made an iCloud backup from before, all you're going to want to do is click on from iCloud backup and you can restore from that iCloud backup that you made earlier. If you have another iPhone laying around, you can go and back up from the other iPhone. If you have another Mac or PC, if you made a PC backup, you can do it that way. If you have an Android phone, you can also restore from that particular Android phone. Or if you don't want to transfer anything, you can just click on don't transfer anything. You can just click on that and that will basically allow you to not transfer anything from there. So like I said, this is the probably one of the most important areas for this particular one. So you can just choose whatever you want and you can just you know restore the data that you want to from there. Now, in this case, I'll just click Don't Transfer Anything, and here you can just log back in with your particular Apple ID that we made before. So we can go and do that, and then when you go and sign in with this particular Apple ID, make you probably want to make sure it's the same exact Apple ID as before. This can take a couple of minutes to do, so just keep that in mind. So just you know go through this process as you normally would, and at this point, you can just continue on from here as long as all your data looks everything, you know, as long as everything looks good. You're pretty much good from here. And you can go and set up your cellular as you normally would. So in this case, I'll just click on you know, set up cellular later. You can set up your Siri, whichever way you want to. And then you're basically good to go. And if you did it right the same way that you wanted to, all of your data should be restored properly. You can download the same applications that you just had before. And that's pretty much it.
your iPhone, whatever iPhone you have, should now have all your data restored and you're now back on iOS 18. If we go and click on here, click on general, click on about, you should be able to see we are on the latest version of iOS 17 as of this point. So that's basically how it's done. It's a super basic process. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.